Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to explore a common yet primarily ignored aspect of the One Piece world, trees. Jeez, you really ideas. I like cherry pie. And all right, let's let's all calm down. This is your source for everything One Piece after all. You can say I've run out of ideas when I stop posting videos. Until then, let's just enjoy some trees because I think you'll be surprised at just how many awesome trees we actually have in the series. These aren't your run of the mill boring protrusions of wood. No, 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 no. These are crowning marvels of nature or in some cases nature spliced with some, uh, let's say human interference. The only criteria for this list, apart from obviously being a tree, is that all trees feature must be canon, so no filler rubbish as per usual. But with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top five trees in One Piece. Number five. The Tree of Knowledge. All right, let's be honest. When we think of the island of Ohara, this tree is pretty much the only image that comes to mind. But in addition to being the crowning landmark of Ohara, this tree served a much greater purpose as it doubled as a library, quite possibly the most extensive library the world has ever known. As such, this 5,000 year old marvel played host to an incredible array of scholars, including the Straw Hat's very own Nico Robin. Sadly, I'm afraid this tree no longer exists in the world as the inhabitants of Ohara fell victim to a spot of genocide via the hands of the world government due to their ongoing research regarding the void century. A period of time so short that one as old as the tree of knowledge would scoff and label it as a young whippersnapper. Its fate was actually very similar to the real world library of Alexandria, which was also burnt down by Akainu. Alas, this tree no longer exists, so I'm afraid it can proceed no further on this list. However, we, the enthusiastic botanists of the Grand Line Review, will always remember you, good tree. Number four. The Whale Tree. Now we move to the Phantom Island of Zo, where a particular area known as the Whale Forest exists. Here, we have a tree, which allegedly just so happens to be shaped like a whale. Yes, I'm sure this is entirely natural, but no matter how this chunk of hard fibrous material came about, there is no denying its pure magnificence. But there's more to this tree than its aesthetic appeal, although there is an awful lot of that. So much so that the ever super Frankie was immediately inspired to plagiarize its design and applied it to his hair. Now However, similarly to the Tree of Knowledge, the Whale Tree plays host to a rather juicy secret contained within it. In this case, being one of the four road poneglyphs, which are essential to learn the location of Raftel. Although in retrospect, I'm not sure how well it's hidden because the Whale Tree is by far the most obvious monument on all of Zo. But hey, that's not the fault of this wondrous tree, which spends all day, every day, holding its head up high and grinning wildly into the sky. Number three, Adam and Eve. All right, next up, we're looking at two, count them, two mighty trees. And really, I should consider them separate entities, but I'm not going to because they are equally mysterious trees that we have not yet gazed upon in the series. Well, that, that's not technically true. We've actually seen the roots of the sunlight tree Eve draped around the bubble of Fishman Island. And these roots are the only reason why this island can actually exist 10,000 meters below the sea. As sunlight actually travels through the roots of Eve all the way down to the sea floor, as well as supplies oxygen through the wonderful process of respiration. Meanwhile, we also have the treasure tree Adam, which probably looks very different to the tree we're seeing here. But in essence, this tree produces the highest quality wood in the world that is sold for extraordinarily high prices. In fact, the Thousand Sunny was constructed using Adam wood as was the Aura Jackson. According to Frankie, the vague history of the Adam tree is as follows. Long ago, an endless war was waged on a certain island that eventually destroyed everything. Everything except this one tree. So you know what, these trees sound pretty damn cool. Possibly individually even worthy of being the number one best tree in the series. But not having seen them yet is slightly problematic because there are certainly at least two much cooler trees that we have encountered. Number two, zombie tree. Now, first and foremost in this, this shook me to my very core, but Zombie Tree actually has a name, which is MacDonald. But I'm having difficulty coming to terms with that, so I'm going to continue calling him Zombie Tree. Zombie Tree is an incredibly laid back husk of wood that had a shadow inserted into it by Gecko Moria and thus was brought to life. He is a true zombie of leisure, often preferring to spend his time in a dank, foggy forest drinking tea with his fellow zombies. Although despite being a zombie, he is very easily scared, having been terrified by the very idea that Luffy 
you would capture him. Although on that note, I should mention that Zombie Tree is the only tree on this list who was officially invited to become a member of the Straw Hat Pirates. Sadly, after Gecko Moria's defeat, Zombie Tree's shadow was returned to its original owner and he became a lifeless husk once more. But for the grand life he led, he will be forever remembered as the number two best tree on this list. However, for now, we must move to the main event. Number one. King Baum. All right, the existence of this figure is actually quite similar to that of Zombie Tree. King Baum is a homie created by Big Mom, who serves as the master of the seducing woods on Whole Cake Island. As a tree, King Baum shows the most character out of any contender so far. Having a very staunch and serious personality in regards to his duty as master of the woods, however, he also sports a wonderfully twirly thin mustache, the likes of which one does not generally see on a tree. As a result of this, but not actually, King Baum likes to make his existence as a tree very clear by adding the suffix due to his sentences, which is one reading for the kanji for tree. With that said, King Baum, like all homies, is completely bound to the power of Big Mom, and thus when presented with Big Mom's Vivia card by Nami, he had no choice but to assist the Straw Hats on two separate occasions. In particular, the second time around was when King Baum transcended his existence as a mere tree by showing that he has a heart, and was willing to betray Big Mom in order Order to safely return to his fiance, Lady Tree, who is our bonus tree of the video. Yay, bonus tree, bonus, bonus tree, 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 bonus tree, yeah. Sadly, the current status of King Balm is unknown after he was obliterated by an attack from Prometheus, another one of Big Mom's homies. But for the sake of Lady Tree, I have no choice but to presume that he is alive and well, as well as the king of this list. But that pretty much does it for the top five trees in one piece. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And if you are in any way keen on supporting this independent channel, then please do check out my Patreon, Discord server, or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. And finally, please do comment with your own favorite trees, as well as exaggerated statements about how I am running out of ideas. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.